<laughs> okay. So, this week on the podcast, Mr. Brad Gibson, you've been uh, – so, Brad, like, if, if you followed Primos at all, then for, like, the past – you know who Brad is. How long How long have we turkey hunted with you? I think the first trip we did was nine years ago, I believe. Yeah. Maybe ten now. I mean, I, everything I think was yesterday was six months ago. So, Like, I can re- I can remember watching uh, spring turkey DVDs, like, well before I worked here. Right. And they were hunting Osceola's with you down uh, here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been close to ten years now, yeah. I, would, I would say. I have to go back and look, but... Like my first Osceola I ever killed was with you. Yep. Very memorable hunt. One of my favorites. Yep. It's been a, but then, uh, you know, I think we come down with the, uh, how many years? That was my second spring. So that's had to have been three or four years ago now that that happened. Yeah. And then me and you got, became buddies and you let me come down here and hang out with you in the summertime and all that kind of good stuff. So yeah. here's the reason, like, that why that we're one of well one of the reasons why I wanted to do a podcast with you is like obviously during the summertime there's not much for hunting going on mm-hmm. and everyone's fishing right and uh, also because like I I firmly believe being from you know me being from Central Mississippi being from you know like spending on if any time of water I spent was mostly fresh water because I live three hours from the Gulf mm-hmm. I, I know so little about salt water anything any kind of recreational salt right. water you saw that yesterday very uh-huh. inexperienced <laughs> right yep. uh but i also like i think i think florida like in itself has like so it, it's got to be on up there and like i don't know if there is like a i don't I, what am i trying to say is like like florida has like so many opportunities for hunting and fishing yeah, I mean, there's like a variety. There's so much variety. There's here. something to do every day. Yeah, every day of the week, every month of the year. There's something we can go do. Right. You know, we're not froze over. You know. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, from fishing salt water, fresh water. I mean, we have hundreds of lakes around here. Right. I mean, right where I live out here on Lake Okeechobee, we're an hour to the east coast of saltwater fish, or where two hours to the west coast the fish yeah. you know the gulf side you know so there's always something to do you're not doing the same thing every day and that's what keeps a lot of us going around here i mean it's yeah. like we don't get bored with anything yeah you know we can we can go hog hunting tonight we can go bass fishing tomorrow the next day we can go saltwater fishing right we can go turkey hunt tomorrow you know yeah, there's, there's always just, something to yeah. do around here there's just opportunity and it's it's like and there i mean again if you're from Florida, if you're from stuff like this, you you probably wouldn't have. The only thing I can liken it to is my experience in the past two days is almost to the equivalent of what I see when I take someone, I guess, like turkey hunting or deer hunting for the first time. Because I saw so many things. Like, again, like the first day we went fishing, we were on Lake Okeechobee. Mm-hmm. And you were like, you see those riffles in the water? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, he's like that's a manatee. And I'm like, oh, what? Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, because I mean, you see them all the time because you're right. out there. You got right. fishing trips out there. Uh-huh. I've never seen a manatee. Right. So that thing sticks his head up to get some air. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm <laughs> freaking out over there. Yep. Look at it. And Brad's like, what are you doing? It's just a manatee. <laughs> right. And then uh, um, the, the next day, we go to saltwater. Uh-huh. We see a sea turtle. I've never seen a sea turtle. Right. Much less, oh, this was the, got to be one of the coolest parts of the day. So, I mean, you know, if, I guess if you had anywhere kind of along the lines, the same interest, or every kid watched some National Geographic or Animal Planet growing up, and you've right. all seen mm-hmm. videos of those baby sea turtles. They hatching, and then they, they crawling, out, crawling the out, and you know, out to the ocean. You and, know. uh, you said you're like hey like look right there and i look over i mean this is when we were trying to catch bait so yep. we were very close to the beach right we were within 100 yards of the beach right correct and uh we realized what was happening then there was a large crowd of people on the beach they must have been watching those tur- those baby turtles hatch absolutely yep. and, and one of them came swimming right by the boat right by it thing could have fit in the palm of my hand yep and that made my day because i'd never seen that before right. it's just it's and so. the funny thing is it wasn't 30 minutes before that you seen your first the big adult turtle, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It was a, probably a three or 400 pounder. Yeah, you know. Huge. And then we're catching bait 30 minutes later. Then one of, it could have been hers. It could have yeah. been another one. But, you know, that little baby that, you know, it's the size yeah. of a half dollar. 
Yeah. You know, comes right down the, come right down the side of the boat. It's just a mm-hmm. whole, like yesterday was, again, uh, like to, for, I guess the Florida natives, it's like, you know, it's just kind of, I don't, it's something that you do all the time, kind of like, you know, deer hunting for me back home. It's, you know, something you used to see them. But I, it was like a whole different ecosystem I got introduced to. Right. I got a little snorkeling around I did right there in the inlet. I thought that was so cool. Right. That water looked like, it looked prettier than pool water. Right. Yep. There's fish swimming around and saw a barracuda. Yep. And the, I don't know. If, uh, I had I had a blast. Um, one thing I want to get to. So, like, the main goal yesterday was to try to catch a Goliath grouper. Correct. Which almost worked out, didn't exactly work out. Right. Which, my fault, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got took to the tool shed. Yeah, that thing <laughs> whooped me. But the thing that's, like, like interesting about Goliath grouper to me, like, so the first introduction I had to him was, I, I, it was a YouTube video. I couldn't even tell you who it was. I just right. saw a video of someone, like, hooking into this giant fish with a fishing pole that looked like a pool stick. It was so big. Right. And see this huge fish. And I don't even know. So I don't even know what it is about them. But like down here, like to the natives down here, y'all y'all really don't care for Goliath grouper that much. Most of us don't, for right. sure. I mean, um, all these wrecks and reefs that we dove for years and fished for years, you know, um, they've always been here. Right. You know, but um, – back years ago you know you could fish for them right you know now it's illegal to keep one and it has been like that for a long time i don't know exactly how many years but um just like that wreck we dove yesterday right you know um that wreck when we were younger um loaded with 15 20 different species of fish Uh uh-huh we didn't see three different species of fish there most of them were little small bait fish all the bigger fish the bigger snappers the groupers lobster um permit pumping all that normally hangs out around there you don't see them no more these things have ate everything they just go and wipe it out they just wipe it out i mean they get on a wreck or a reef you know and they just go you see how big they are yeah, i mean a huge. lot of uh, a small one we seen yesterday was probably 200 pounds right we seen one yesterday that was roughly around 500 pounds that's what blew my mind right because i knew they were big it's kind of it, it, like the first time i ever saw an elk in person you know they're big but when you see them with your own eyes you're like oh my gosh right yep these are the same way. I mean, yeah. you see a lot of these videos because sometimes the videos, they don't look as big as they actually are. Right. You know, underwater until you actually catch him and bring him up and you're, right. you're holding him, you know, in the water there and he's three times bigger than you are. Right. You know, um, but they just gorge themselves on everything. If they can get their mouth on it, they'll eat it. I mean, look at the videos on YouTube and the internet eating sharks, yeah. you know, anything that somebody's got hooked, they eat it before it gets to the boat. Right. I mean... So the, I, my opinion, and there's plenty of them out there right now. Yeah. I mean, there's not a wreck or reef or dock ledge in Florida that doesn't have one on it. Yeah. The thing that's interesting to me is like hearing, hearing y'all, the natives talk about them. They kind of sound like just lit, like the first opinion I formed them is like, man, they sound like the wild hogs of the ocean. Like, right. cause they sound like they just move in and just clear this stuff out, just destroy it. Yeah, pretty much. So what's interesting to me is that they're protected. Right. Like, th- is there... Do you know any of the reasoning behind that? Like why it's that well, way? They were, they were, um, yeah, when they were, um, able to catch them recreationally and keep them, yeah. you know, they're easy to catch. Right. They, they'll eat anything you put down there, you know, and the numbers did go get really low. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in our opinion, we've all said it, you know, let's, let's do a, uh, like a permit, you know, you get one a year or, yeah. you know, um, a, a draw system maybe where you draw a a, a goliath group or tag or permit you right. know what i mean um and you know let, let's get some of them you know yeah. I'm not, we're not saying let's go out there and let's wipe them all out right. nobody wants to do that at all yeah but if we want to catch one to eat or whatever there's plenty there for us to right do that, yeah you know what i mean and it could help keep it in check to where they don't just wipe out everything right Cause, like I, said, I don't have the stuff to compare it to like you and gabe were talking about yesterday mm-hmm. but i know what i saw in that wreck yesterday like you said it looked just like a barren right. something wreck but there was nothing down there years but, ago when you dove that wreck i mean it just looked like a aquarium down there right there's you've seen the video yesterday you've yeah. seen with your own eyes there is there's nothing there yeah it's just them yeah. You know, a few little bait fish, but that's it. They just come in there and take it over. They come take it over. Yeah. Everything. So to my yeah, in my mind it doesn't make sense why that wouldn't 
allow to be regulated. Right. You know, but you know, we've heard knows. we've heard, you know, that they're trying to figure out how to do it, you know. Yeah. Um which the tagging or the permit or however that's going to work that way. Right. I think that would be great. I think they just got to put it together and figure out well, how they're going to do it. And like I said, as many of them as there are, and as many of them as you talk about them, it seems like you, you know, seems like they could at least like try some feelers, you know, because right. I, I don't think you, it's not like they're going to wipe them out in one fatal swoop, I wouldn't no, think. No, But um, I, they should start out slow, I think, you yeah. know, and let's see how it goes, you yeah. know. Um, just so interesting. Like, and again, like yesterday, like we, the one we, the first one we hooked into, or any of the ones we hooked into, like legally, we'd have to pull. We could pull them to the water, right? And but you could not put them in the boat. You cannot put them in the boat. You cannot bring them out of the water. Um, get in the water and take your picture. Yeah, you, you have know. to jump in there with them, right? <laughs> and hopefully, all them bull sharks we seen early in the morning. No, that thank show you. Up. <laughs> no, thank you. No, yeah, me and sharks, we don't jive. Um, one of the other things I want to talk to you about is uh. Cause that's not not just popular here, but it's like like bow fishing. Uh-huh. Bow fishing has become popular everywhere. Right. It's like so many people's favorite summer pastime these days. Right. Yep. Do y'all do, y'all do that on, on Okeechobee a pretty good bit? Okeechobee right? and uh, see, you know, bow fishing is huge in the north, up in the north. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is yep. big. You know, uh, huge. It why it has never taken off down here like it did up north? I have no idea. Right. You know, I mean. There is a ton of species of fish mm-hmm. in Okeechobee that we can shoot. I mean, a ton of them from mullet to catfish, tilapia, you know, gar, bowfin. Mm-hmm. There's a, and, and when we do bow fishing trips out there, I mean, you're talking about in a four or five hour trip, thousands of shots. You know, that's with three yeah. or four people. You know, right, it's right, nonstop right. shooting. You don't go five minutes without a shot. You go, you shoot. You reel your fish in, or you miss, and you're shooting again within a minute or two. Right. You know what I mean? At at tops, and why it's not that big down here? I mean, a lot, a lot of us locals do it. Yeah. But as far as um people coming from other states to do it, I don't know why they don't. I yeah. mean, we have such a good reef, the clean water. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and just millions and millions of fish. Yeah. I mean, it's nonstop shooting. Yeah. You know, and a lot of these species, not all of my name, but a couple of the species I named are invasive species. Right. There, there's no limit. There's no nothing. I you mean, just keep shooting them. You just yeah. keep shooting. They want them all out of there. Yeah. You know, we want them out of there. Um, um, but I tell you what, we, we've been doing it. I've been bow fishing like Okeechobee uh, probably 20, 22 years now. Right. You know, and uh, I remember me and a couple of friends of mine started doing it and you didn't even hear about nobody doing it. I mean, we were back then there wasn't, we didn't even have any resources around here to buy any bow fishing equipment. Yeah. We, we were taking, you know, old aluminum arrows, yeah. you know, old, old arrows and we were drilling holes in on the tire strings too. And <laughs> we were taking field tips and drilling holes through field tips and running some wire through there yeah. and bending it back. You know yeah. what I mean? And, um, using old Zepco reels with like 80 pound, mono you know i mean we yeah. had the we were taking uh grade eight bolts and and screwing them to our uh our risers of our bows yeah taking plumbing straps and strapping the reel <laughs> down to it i mean some of these rigs we used i mean it was a joke compared to what's out there it'd now. be funny to have a picture of some of that oh i'd probably do somewhere i got yeah. one i could dig up but i mean the rigs we used were Oh my goodness! I mean, yeah, makeshift, makeshift in the in the barn at eleven, twelve o'clock at night. Let's try this. Let's try that. You Red, know? Redneck ingenuity I, at at the highest level. When I tell yeah. you this stuff, we were drilling holes through aluminum arrows and field tips <laughs> to make fishing heads. I'm not joking. We made yeah. a bunch of them. Some ideas weren't great. Some didn't work at all. Yeah, you know, but well, trial all, and error. All trial and error. <laughs> but I tell you what, we were having a blast. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's yeah. nonstop shooting out there. Yeah, you know? and we would take our old. It, we didn't have bow fishing bows. Right. We were using our hunting bows, pulling yeah. you know sixty five to seventy five pounds. You know, yeah. and <laughs> goodness, we, you couldn't turn them down to thirty five or forty. Yeah. Or, you know, they wouldn't able to do that. Now right. you got bows that can be adjusted just a matter of a few seconds out there. Yeah. You that know, are made for that kind of thing. And they're made for that kind of thing. We have rests that are made for it. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, well, I don't even want to get into some of the rests we made. I mean. <laughs> You'd shoot one arrow and they come flying off your riser. You right. know, oh my goodness! But <laughs> it's been around a long time. I just I've never figured out 
you know, with me being an outfitter guy down here uh, for as long as I have and a lot of my friends, some of us have tried to, you know, advertise bow fishing, yeah. you know, and we, we do book a few here and there. Just nothing very substantial. But it's, it's not like it's never taken off, and yeah. I have no idea. I mean, we've had a few bow fishing tournaments down here, invited people from out of state, and, you know, never have any of them show up. You know, it can't even pull people from North Florida. Huh. It's like not a huge interest in it for some reason. And in a tournament, you know, um, I won one uh, just last year here in Okeechobee. Wasn't a big one. I think we had a dozen or 14 boats in it, you know. Yeah. And um, we shot uh, um, 900-something pounds of fish in a four-hour trip. Gracious. That's, that's including drive time. That's a lot of fish. That's a lot of fish. And most of them, 95% were tilapia. Yeah. You know, um, there was a couple mullet in there and a bow fin or two. But yeah. Ninety-five percent of them fish were all tilapia. Yeah. And explain know. that tila- tilapia is in one of the invasive species you're, it, you're it talking is. about. Yes, it is. Yeah, and um, you know it's invasive. Um, you know, but our bass and stuff do feed on the little fry and the young ones. You know, right. uh, You know, up to six or seven inch ones. But um, you know, they um, they're pretty good to eat. You know, too. They're not mm-hmm. the best food in the world. You know, out there on the lake. But um, they're not farm raised ones. You know, right. Um. So, you know, we do eat them a lot of times. We give a lot of them away to, you know, some locals that do right. love them, you know. But um, the main part, we just getting them out of the lake. Yeah. You know, that's the main thing. Because there's so many of them. There's I know. What, yeah, millions. the first day we saw a ton of them. And then how many, I guess it was two summers now, I came down here with Dad. Right. That we, yeah, they were, we saw one spot we pulled up to. I can't remember, but they were everywhere. We actually saw somebody bow fishing them that day. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, it's, it's something we do a lot in the summertime. I mean, it's you know, there's, there's there's no turkey season. There's no deer season. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, there's something to do. Yeah. You know, we get on the airboats. Or it's something we could do at night on the airboats with lights. Or we could go out there in the bass boats during the day or john boats. or yeah. airboat. It don't matter what kind of boat you have. You can go do it out here. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't need a bow fishing boat yeah. to go do this. That was one of the questions I actually wanted to ask you is like, because we get that a lot. And, like, I've been bow fishing a few times. Right. I'm not enough to consider myself, you know, someone to, like, give someone sound advice. Right. But they always, you know, like, how do I even get started? Or, you know, how do I do? I'm like, man, I don't I don't know. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it, at nighttime, I mean, we, I, I have a, uh, a flats boat and an airboat. And um, at nighttime, you know, we take the airboat. You can get around in shallower water easier, you know, with the airboat and stuff like that. Um, or a duck boat with a mud motor of some kind. But uh, when the lake's up and uh, they're out there in that you know two foot three foot of water mm-hmm. you can take any boat you own a, a john boat a flats boat a bass boat uh heck a pontoon boat at that much yeah you know what i mean um as long as it can float you can use it it don't matter what kind of boat you have yeah you know um right now the lake's very low out there and um so all the boat fishing trips i did in the last month you know they've all been on the airboat and most of them at nighttime you know, the fish hold a little bit better at night to the light, you know. What right, I mean? right, right, right. And it's cooler right now. It's, you know, we're our heat indexes right now in the 101, 104 yeah. every day. It's supposed to be 105 heat yeah. index. I don't want to be out there bow fishing right now. No, I don't blame you. But it was very know, hot yesterday on that nine, yeah. Yeah, 9, 10 o'clock at night, that temperature dropped 10 or 15 degrees, you know, and it'll be a little more comfortable. Right. You know, so we'll, we usually do a lot of nighttime stuff right now yeah. when it's this hot. Yeah. Um, but it, I mean, it's fun for everybody. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's not a, it's not boring. My, like it's the farthest thing from boring. It's my constant. S- my son is sixteen now, fixing to be seventeen, and he's been bow fishing since he was, I think, seven or eight years old. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something. Any my wife loves to bow fish. Anybody can bow fish. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a. Uh, a first timer. Yeah. By the end of the night, they've got it figured out. Yeah. You and that's know, the it, that's one of the beauties of it because it's not like you have to certain you don't have to have a certain weight on your bow. No. You know, I mean, you you can you can you know, like I said, it's pretty much a come one come all whoever wants to. Right. Exactly. I mean, most of your shots are within eight or ten feet of the boat. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're right they're yeah. really close. You know, a foot or two of water at the most. You know, yeah. and it's just it's something everybody can do. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's not many things that. As far as hunting or fishing, fishing yes, but not in the hunting side of it. I consider that bow fishing hunting. Right. Yeah. Um, there's not many things you can hunt with four or five people at one time and everybody enjoyed it at the same, yeah. same time. I yeah. mean, if you're deer hunting, you're in a tree stand by yourself or mm-hmm. one person, or if you're in a turkey blind, it's just one or two of you. Yeah, and you got to be quiet. You got to be quiet. You know, you can't cut up and have a good time. You know, uh, bow fishing. I mean, heck, four or five of us can go at a time. You know. Yeah. You know, and everybody's got a bow. Everybody's shooting. You know, kind of. Oh, you missed. You know, and just picking at each other. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it's just it's something that 
it's one of them things that everybody can do and have a great time. Yeah. You know? I'd agree with that. I think that's probably why it's gotten as popular as it has in other places. Because right. like, so you hear so much about it now. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think the I think the main reason why it's not as big here as it is a lot of places mm-hmm. is because we have so many other things to do like we talked about this you a minute really, ago. You really do. You know, you got people that this time of year are thinking saltwater fishing, they're thinking bass fishing, they're thinking all these other things, you know, and, um, you know, so which, many people yeah. do so many different things. Which makes sense. I mean, like, again, like bass fishing alone, like, right. like I mean, take for, like my dad is already mad enough at me that I'm, at, I'm down here without right. him and, and we got to go bass fishing. And of and course, him. we're sending him pictures the other day. And well, yeah. You know, I mean, what do you, <laughs> like, the fir- that, first, that first good one you call, I'm like, you got to send that to your yeah. dad right now. <laughs> Primo's Takeout Seat. You don't have time or money to waste on something that won't work well for you. Our Brassica mix gives you a fast-growing plot that keeps deer coming back from early season to late. Low till and minimum ground prep makes the Brassica mix a seed blend that works hard for you while you don't have to spend too much time working on it. Check it out now at primos.com. We came, that's been, that's two summers ago we came down here, and he's, he's still, I mean, heck, I'm still talking about it, too. It's a, like I said, Florida's, I don't, like, I guess it maybe, it, I mean, you can't really call it a sleeper state because, every, like, it's not like a hidden thing, but until you come down here and experience it, and like my first experience was turkey hunting, right? And then now, I've, you know, we've done some saltwater fishing, some bass fishing. I mean, there's like I, I just can't talk about how much there is to do down here. Right? Like it's like a it's a sportsman's paradise. Right? Exactly. It really is. It is. I mean, there's something to be you can do in the outdoors every day. Well, even th- there's um quail hunting. Quail. I mean, quail's not. I mean, they're most of them. You know, like um release quail but i mean right how yeah. fun is that oh, yeah <laughs> so much fun it is so much fun yeah. um you know and um you know look at our hog population i mean yeah there yeah ain't, there ain't nowhere we can't go any ranch or farm around here and we can't go to hog hunting yeah. you know what i mean um you know they're not as this i don't say they're not they're we're a lot more open country down here than, mm-hmm. than a lot of states so it's a little bit easier for us to hunt them than like where you're from and mm-hmm. some other states you know that are all woods you know what i mean we have a lot of open pasture land you know and the woods are not real thick so they don't have as many hiding places and they're not as i don't know how to say this but they you know they just don't get away from you as easy right you know what i mean which isn't a bad thing because they're hogs right (laughs) and they're easier to control down here than they are in states up like where you're from right and they're everybody i talk to up that way is how hard they're managing their deer leases you know or you know their farms and they're destroying them we for the most part they're not destroying farms down here as bad as they are up there. Really? You know, just yeah. because we're able to hunt them a little easier. Gotcha. You know, they're a little more open. We can, you know, have a lot more shots at them in the fields and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, um, we're not hilly or rocky or nothing like that. Yeah, it's pretty places. flat. It's pretty flat. flat, you know, so it's easy to get around, easy on the dog, the, for the dog hunters that hunt with right. dogs, you know what I mean? Uh, I remember growing up, it was nothing to go out with a with a set of good dogs and catch twenty five or thirty a night. Right, you know what I mean. This you and your buddies, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I don't do that as much as I used to. Right, I'm getting a little older and don't want to be out all night long hog hunting. <laughs> you know, yeah. I used to run and walk miles under my dogs. You know, getting them out of some places. You know, or whatever, tying them and dragging them yeah. out to the truck or whatever. And now, if I can't drive up to him, I don't want to go do it. <laughs> i don't blame you i don't blame you at all and that's that has not has no uh shortage of popularity people it's like people can't get enough of hog all hunting. across the country you know, cannot get enough we of had it. a conversation i think just a day or two ago about like you know i was when i was you know a teenager growing up you know and out of high school and i hog hunted five or six nights a week i loved it you yeah. know and um it's just one of them things like oh my goodness like I don't even want to go hog hunting no more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I did so much of it yeah. for so many years that, you know, uh, the only hog hunting I do now is when I'm guiding a hog yeah. hunt. You know, yeah. I, don't, um, I don't go out and do my son. Like I say, he's 16 now and he's starting to get into some of it, you yeah. know, and, and going with some friends and whatnot. And, um, but that's how I was at that age also, yeah. Yeah. you know, but it, it's crazy to me that over the last, what, 10 years or so, it's just like the craze across the country. It's, it's huge. It, it's huge. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, man, I've killed thousands of these things or caught thousands of yeah. these things. I Probably them. most of them because you had to well, or you needed to. Well, a couple of farms and, and, you know, and ranches and stuff that I, that I worked for and managed some of them. Um, 
you know, we had to control them. I right. Mean, we had, we had, you know, a lot of crops and, and fields, and uh, we had to keep them in check, yeah. you know, to um, to keep everything in production. Yeah. Let me, ask, let me ask you this, because I know, like, especially at home, like, like we, it, it's common knowledge, like hogs are terrible on farms, absolutely mm-hmm. horrible. They ever cause problems on like like orange groves and stuff, or is that? Yeah, they do. Uh, for the most part, you know, they, um, you know, I've been in the citrus business many years down here uh, with my main background what i did for a long time and um you know they're going to grab the low-hanging fruit yeah you know what i mean um probably the biggest destruction they do in the groves is um you know some of your young trees rooting around them and stuff like that right. but like your um your sprinkler systems under your emitters yeah. and stuff like that that for your irrigation they they tend to want to chew on them and stuff yeah. like that now you got a water leak out in the middle of the grove right. you know but for the most part they're they just eat the fruit that falls on the ground gotcha and w- w- the fruit that hits the ground we're not you know we're not picking it up and yeah selling it anyhow yeah you know um so um you know they'll root up the bottoms in the roadways which makes it rough on the track yeah. and the trucks getting around there sometimes um but not like detrimental they're not detrimental to the citrus gotcha. groves you know as far as the actual tree or yeah. the fruit itself yeah. you know what i mean uh they're going to get that low-hanging stuff yeah. you know if they can I was just uh, curious about that because I know how big of an industry citrus yeah, is down citrus here. Citrus is huge down here. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. as huge as it was because of all the different um, diseases and stuff we went through over right. the last 10 or 15 years. Right. Um, but still a huge industry down here. And um, hogs have to be controlled in the groves. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, most most groves, everyone I know of, and they do a very good job of keeping them out with trapping. Mm-hmm. It could be from trapping them with steel traps or... When I say steel traps, I mean like a live catch trap, right? Or, you know, hunting them with, with with you know firearms or whatever, yeah. or even running dogs. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, catching them with dogs and removing them. You yeah. know, um, there's a lot of different methods that they all use, and they all do a good job with it. Yeah. I mean, they keep handling. Everybody it. knows somebody that hog hunts. You yeah. know what I mean? So even if the grove owner, or the grove manager doesn't ain't a big hunter. He knows somebody that is. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to be more than happy to go in there and remove those hogs. <laughs> He's not going to have to beg him to come get them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, you probably, I mean, like I said, it's part of it. Like, at my, I think I, we just talked about this on the last podcast, but like, my, I got a cousin in uh, Mississippi has a big farm. He tra- He. I mean, he'll hunt them sometimes, but like he traps them because he lit. I mean, he has to. Right. And they'll, they'll, wipe, they'll wipe his crops out. Right. Wipe his, I mean, it's it's like a necessity for them. Right. Yeah. <sighs> Destructive things. Oh yeah. Nasty things. Uh, like how that one more like hog question, and then I'll we'll we'll change topics. Like how many do you think, like in a year, like if you like on a year that you do a lot of guided hunts, like how many think you'll you'll i mean not you'll kill but you know you'll be in on a year pretty high number um over a hundred yeah i mean or so yeah. guided hunts a year you know right. i mean we, we'll, we'll take that many out on guided trips throughout the year um but you know between the guided trips and personal i would say a couple hundred yeah you know what i mean and that and i don't do a lot of it right i mean that's that's not a lot of days yeah. i mean that's um now back you know, for one big ranch that I'm, I was, uh, I worked for, um, we have done that many in just a matter of a couple of weeks before. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it was just such a big piece of property that, um, I mean, held them and oh my they goodness. populate. So oh fast. my goodness. I mean, it was nothing to see 30, 40, 50 in one pack in one field. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, you just sit back there and, Pick them off, you know. Yeah. I mean, them fields are so big. I mean, you could get you eight or nine or ten before they got out of the field, you mm-hmm. know. Especially if you had somebody there firing away with you. Oh, yep. that's crazy stuff. Right. Florida's a crazy place. A lot of stuff going on. Well, I could keep asking questions, but we do have fishing to do this afternoon. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So Some more bass fishing. Yeah, more bass fishing. More pictures to send to dad to you uh-huh. know let him know that we're here. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But um. Yeah. So definitely, uh, guys, listen to this. Things to things to take away. Like one, uh, if you haven't heard of Goliath Grouper before listening to this podcast, like just go to YouTube and type in Goliath Grouper and watch mm-hmm. some of those videos. Crazy. Yep. Like they're crazy how big they are. Um, um bow fishing. I hope we answered some of the questions y'all been asking about that. Um, if you're ever looking for, you know, turkey hunting, 
fit bass fishing every, you you got everything brad I, i'd sit here and rattle yeah, off I a get, list and you know i get asked all the time you know you know you're just a bass fishing guide and crappie fishing guide and i said yeah I, I do that and some people say well you do just turkey hunts don't you i said listen if it hops walks crawls flies in the state of florida i do it <laughs> i mean there's a, a lot of your guys a lot of your guys are just bass fishing guys or right. just saltwater guys or just turkey hunting guys or alligator hunting guides and I go from one season to the next. Yeah. Whatever's in season or the time of the year, that's what we're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? We we do a little bit of everything. Yeah. And we, man, we didn't even get to talking about gators. That'd be a whole other podcast episode. We, we saw mean, like you, a, mean you got to come back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'd do that. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do a alligator and turkey podcast, the next one. Yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. So, guys, we're going to sign off because uh, we got some fishing to do, which I'm not upset about at all. Uh, hope y'all enjoyed this podcast. So check out some of that stuff we talked about. And as always, thank you for listening.